Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So we're in yet another lockdown here in the UK, lockdown three, and I'm pretty much starting to lose all concept of time. So I thought I'd bring you another lighting breakdown from the comfort of home. A hair shoot I photographed all the way back in February of last year recently got published in Creative Head magazine, which is one of the leading hair magazines in the UK. As with most of my lighting setups, it was super simple, just another two light setup and something you can easily replicate yourself. Hair is something that I love photographing. It's incredibly technical and precise and often requires some very creative thinking to get it right. I also love working with hairstylists and the creative teams on these shoots. Generally, they're very fun, bubbly people and it's just very enjoyable overall. As with any shoot, I always talk to the client beforehand to define the style that we're aiming to achieve. We wanted to shoot something elegant, minimalist and clean, which was in keeping with the brand's aesthetic and is also appealing to their client base. As in some of my previous videos, I'm going to jump into Satellite 3D to help demonstrate the lighting. Satellite offer a free trial for anybody who wants to test out their software. If you do fancy purchasing it, please consider using my affiliate link in the description below. So my key light on the day was my Parabolix 40, which is a parabolic umbrella made by the company Parabolix who are based in California. This is a true parabolic umbrella, but at the fraction of a price of the breezer or broncolor designs. I've owned this modifier for over a year now, and I'm really happy with how it's performed. It's so versatile and I've used it on pretty much every shoot. I've left a link in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. Absolutely no affiliation, just a really great product. Now, in an ideal world, I would have had this key light here um, boom directly over my head. So more over here. So it's directly over the camera. Now, I wanted to do this because I like the way the shadows fall on the face and how they don't fall on the backdrop. If we have the light central here, the shadows on the nose are going to be pretty much flat. There's going to be a perfect catch light in the top of the eye which you can see on this preview here on the right. Now, when we shift the light to the side ever so slightly, we start to get a little bit of shadow fall off to the side and you can kind of see it under the chin here. If we bring it back to the middle, the shadow's perfectly in line with the chin and the nose. But this was just a compromise we had to make on the day. We only had access to one mega boom and I was using this for our hair light, which is up above. Now I have my parabolic, um, defocused so it's very diffused and quite soft already then I've gone and also added on another layer of diffusion so this is almost like using a softbox you don't really need to use a parabolic for this um, but it's what I had access to on the day a big softbox is pretty much going to do the same thing for you now my second light is a hair light and this for me is really important for hair photography if we toggle our key light off for a second you can see that the hair light is illuminating the hair right from above and we get a nice little shine on the top of the head and it also illuminates part of the chest and the body. Now without this light you don't quite get that sheen, that little bit of extra punch on the hair. Um, this is something I use pretty much on every hair shoot and I'd recommend that you try it out. If we toggle our hair light on and off quickly you can see that it makes a subtle but very noticeable difference when you start to look at it. We get a lovely shine on the top of the hair. And as this hair shoot was all about the color of the different styles, it really brings these colors to life. So something I've also done is I've used two collapsible reflector frames and draped them with thick black fabric to create negative fill to the sides of the models. This really helps to define the jaw lines and create a little bit more contrast in the image. Originally, I wanted to lighten up the backdrop and have it almost white, however, on the day, I didn't actually like this at all. I, I preferred the contrast we were getting um, by separating the model from the backdrop a little bit more. Luckily, I had the creative control on this shoot to be able to make that decision, but that's not always the case. So let's take a look at how you can achieve a brighter backdrop. So a really, really easy way of lighting up a backdrop is by using indirect soft lighting. Now, the way I like to do this, and many other professional photographers will do this, is to use two V-flats on either side and then fire something like a translucent umbrella into both of the V-flats, and you can see this here. Now, our two main lights are 500 watt heads. However, the lights on the backdrop here, as they are being diffused by two translucent umbrellas and the V-flats, 
mean that we need some extra power. So I set these as a thousand watt heads. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see the difference it's gonna make. Without them on, the backdrop's falling to a gray color, which is what I really, really liked from this shoot. I don't particularly like shooting against bright white backdrops, but um, there's a time and a place. I just didn't think it was right for this shoot. But if you do wanna shoot like this, this is how you do it. It's super simple, but you need some polyboards and you need some pretty powerful strobe heads. If we compare the 3D render to one of the final images from the day, you can see what a good job the software's done at replicating this lighting setup. The one thing we can't do in this software is add some movement to the hair. One of the stylists was simply using a hairdryer, sort of angled up at the hair to create a little bit of movement. We also used a cut off of a polyboard just to waft the hair and I would fire away and capture the movement in between. I hope this goes to show that lighting hair doesn't need to be complicated. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and remember to turn on those notification bells if you want to be notified of when I release a new video. I'm also currently planning a series of podcasts where I'll be talking to other photographers in the industry about all things photography. So stay tuned for that. I've got some great guests lined up and I'm hoping to release the first episode before the end of the month. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon.